Hi, I'm Allison, and I'm currently in the Tahoe Science Center, and I'm here to tell you a story about one of our native species, the Lahontan cutthroat trout. It gets its name from its signature red slash near its throat, and its origins from ancient Lake Lahontan. And its story starts at our aquatic food web. So we have here the historic food web from 1880, and you can compare it to the current food web of Lake Tahoe that we have now. And you can see that there are quite a few differences. Uh, there's a lot more species currently, um, and the question is how did they get there? Um, some of them have a purple outline and some of them have a yellow outline. Uh, the ones with the yellow outline were actually um, intentionally introduced into Lake Tahoe by usually some sort of government entity. Um, and the purple ones, uh, we're not sure how they were introduced. They were accidentally introduced. But the big difference that I want to talk about here is, the keyword is big, it's the big species. It's the lack of the Lahontan cutthroat trout in our current food web. Something happened between 1880 and now that caused the Lahontan cutthroat trout to disappear and the lake trout, or Mackinac, to rise to the top of the aquatic food web. Several things happened. So one thing was we used to allow commercial fishing on Lake Tahoe. So between 1850s uh, to about 1920s, they were pulling Lahontan cutthroat trout out and they were shipping them across the U.S. and marketing this uh, Tahoe trout delicacy. On top of that, there was a lot of fish stocking happening during that time into all the lakes in the Sierra Nevada range. And so kokanee salmon, rainbow trout, brook trout, and the lake trout were all being introduced into these lakes that were really popular for all these anglers that enjoy sport fishing. Um, so a combination of overfishing, habitat degradation from like dam construction, and loss of uh, spawning habitat combined with the introduction of a very effective predator, so effective that you can actually just by looking at its jawbone see that the lake trout would be very effective against a gentle little Lonnie like here. <laughs> she wouldn't stand much of a chance. And so by the 1940s, we actually thought that the Lahontan cutthroat trout was extinct. But you can see that Lonnie's here. She's a little honk of their trout, so that's not actually the case. So you can see by the sheer fact that Lonnie is here in presence that they are not actually extinct, but extirpated. And this is one of my favorite parts of the Lahontan cutthroat trout story because it's like they took a note from the Jurassic Park playbook. In the 1990s, a tiny stream called Pilot Peak, far from Tahoe, on the border of Nevada and Utah, they discovered a fish that, oddly enough, looked a lot like the supposedly extinct Lahontan cutthroat trout. But at this point, how would you know? They're extinct. Um, and this is where some of the science out of the box thinking came into play. They compared the DNA with this fish from Pilot Peak with preserved samples from the Smithsonian, Cal Academy, and the University of Michigan. And lo and behold, it was a match. Through genetic tests, they discovered that this fish at Pilot Peak, Utah, was a descendant from the cutthroat trout of Lake Lahan. So when they discovered this match, there began this active effort to recover the species and reintroduce it into the Tahoe Basin. And the U.S. Fish and Wildlife, uh, formerly California Fish and Game, actually created the Lahontan National Fish Hatchery Complex in Gardnerville, Nevada. Uh, and partnered with the Paiute tribe to create a hatchery in Pyramid Lake to do this active reintroduction of Lonnie-sized Lahan Cutler trout. She's hiding over here, but her sized ones back into Fallen Leaf Lake and Pyramid Lake. And in October 2019, they actually reintroduced several thousand large Lahan Cutthroat trout directly into Lake Tahoe. So this, um, what was a kind of sad story of a fish being overfished and being put to extinction actually has this 
happy ending of being um, bound and essentially reborn and reintroduced uh, so it can swim once again in its native waters. So thank you so much for joining me for this story and check out our other ones about the accidentally introduced species and the intentionally introduced species. Thanks so much. Bye.